I am the disciple Nathaniel. Lord, my heart is so heavy tonight, knowing the question that you have put to us, that someone will betray you tonight. I remember when I was with John the Baptist in the wilderness, and people asked John <coughs> if he were the Messiah, and he said, Someone more powerful than I is coming. And I am unfit to untie the thongs of the sandals. I remember when I heard that the Messiah had been found from my brother Philip. And he told me that he had seen the Messiah, the anointed one, the chosen one. And he was so excited, and I, he told me it was Jesus of Nazareth. And I was confused. And I, I was skeptical because Jesus of Nazareth, what good can come from Nazareth? Nazareth is the site of a garrison of Roman soldiers. It is the heart of paganism in the Middle Ages. And then, I came to see you, Lord. And your, your, your gaze, your countenance, I knew Philip was right. You are the Messiah. And I, you turned to me and you said, Behold an Israelite in whom there is no guile, in whom there is no deception. And I was ready to follow. And I'm still ready to follow. And you said, I saw you under the, the fig tree. And from my study of the word of God, I understood what you were saying to me. That from eternity past, you knew me before I was born. You knew me when I was a baby, placed under a fig tree when my mother went to toil in the hot fields at the middle of the day. And you knew me when I was studying the Mosaic Law and the prophets under a fig tree. Lord, my heart is heavy, and I'm very troubled. And I'm in a trial tonight, and I know it. And I would say to you, as I'm reminded of the psalmist King David, who spoke to his Lord, and he said, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there be any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Lord, you told us that you are the way, the life, and the truth, and I will follow you to death. Is it I, Lord? How can this be? I'm James, the son of Alphaeus. Some, some people call me James the Lesser. And Peter, he calls me Shorty. <laughs> and John, who seems to be first at everything, or at least he thinks that way, he, he makes fun of me because I was one of the last disciples to be chosen. But Jesus, he never makes me feel less than anybody else. I'm James, in your eyes. We disciples have quarreled a lot. We're very human. But we try to emulate Jesus, who was never, he really shows love to everybody. He was not afraid of, of eating with the sinners. They were not less in his eyes. He was not afraid of touching the leper. They were not less in his eyes. And he showed courage. And now here we are, near the end of, of three years, and we're going into a very difficult situation. We're in Jerusalem. Jesus is still the same as he was always, and will always be. He was courageous, and he's asking us to be courageous. I don't know if I have the courage that, that Jesus has. 
Jesus and said, I will, am I the one that will betray you? disciple Andrew. Lord, sometimes I don't understand you at all. From the beginning, for three years, you've been speaking about your kingdom to come and our part in it. And now you speak of your death. What is it going to be? Your kingdom or your death? How can it possibly be both? Lord, far be it from me to give you advice, especially at this point. But I would be very careful with what you said. You speak of betrayal, but there's not going to be a betrayal. We are more with you than we have ever been. We realize that we are on the cusp of something wonderful. We were there four days ago when the welcome you received into Jerusalem was probably never seen since King David himself entered the city. Lord, your words are very powerful. We have seen how what you say comes true. That's why I suggest, in my humble opinion, that you be positive with the things that you say. Not negative, that you be uniting, not dividing, that you don't speak of betrayal, but you speak of our community coming together to rise up to this wonderful kingdom that we you are about that we are about to enter. I found in this this morning in the scriptures in, in Jeremiah, and amidst all of his prognostications about negative things to come on Israel, the judgment of Israel, I found a precious Wonderful, positive promise. It said, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans for a hope and a future. Lord, I suggest that, especially at this time, that we speak those kind of positive affirmations. We mind those kind of promises from the word to build each other up. Don't you? Don't you think that would be wise? Don't you think that's a good idea? Oh, I am sorry, Lord. Please forgive me. I have no idea what I'm saying. The reason why your words are powerful is because your words are true. And if you say that one of us is going to betray you, then one of us is going to be betraying you. I wonder if this little speech, if this little coaching session I just gave you, in fact, is a betrayal. I'm sorry, Lord. Is it I? I am Peter. At least that's who I think I am. Everybody's being so nice, but I'm, I'm mad. I'm not sure who I am. I'm not sure who you want me to be. Three years ago when we met, I was Simon. I was a, a, a simple fisherman. I was a sinner. I was not a perfect person. And you asked me to become a fisher of men. And my brother and I, dropped everything, and, and followed you. And I listened to your teachings of love and forgiveness. You gave me the name Peter. You said I was the rock, that we were going to build a church on the rock. And when I protest that my Lord is going to go to his death 
What do you say to me? You say, get thee behind me, Satan? Is, is that Peter the rock? Or, 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 or is this, you're liking me to the devil? I'm confused. I don't know who you want me to be. We have an awesome opportunity here to usher in a new kingdom. We have been oppressed. I've been oppressed. My father's been oppressed. My father's father. Generations. We can change that. We can, we can create a kingdom built on forgiveness and love. Yet, you want to go and die. And when I protest, you say to me that before the rooster crows, I'm going to even deny knowing you three times? Peter, the rock, I would go and die for you. To think one of us would betray you? I don't know who you want me to be. Am I Simon the sinner or am I Peter the rock? I don't understand. John, the beloved, brother to James. Lord, how do you think I could betray you? Since the first day you came to the river, and you asked me to join you. You had already chosen me to be your beloved one. I was to be the one to sit at your right hand side. I was going to be there to protect you. I didn't need to follow you. My family was very wealthy. We didn't need anything. But my brother and I, we followed you. And you chose me. And you let me into your inner circle. And you knew <coughs> that I would protect you. I would be there always to be at your side. You showed me love. You picked me. You knew I was your favorite. It is not I. I am Thomas the Twin, better known to my fellow disciples as Doubting Thomas. Lord, you know I have trouble in believing in anything that I cannot see and touch and experience. Yet as we have followed you through the, the hills of Galilee, I've come to expect you. I've listened to your message. I've seen your many miracles. And I've come to believe in you. I remember when Mary and Martha called upon you to come because Lazarus was dying. And you said, we'll wait a few days. And I couldn't understand that. The man was dying, yet I believed in you, and I was silent, and we waited, and then we went. But my fellow disciples cautioned against it because they said the crowds in Bethany were trying to rising against us, and I said, "Let us go, that we may die with him." And when we arrived there, I experienced your wonderful miracle as you rose Lazarus from the dead. Yes, Lord, I believe in you and your many miracles. But tonight, you have set me to confusion. You said you are going away and we cannot come with you. But we will join you later and we will know the way. How can we know the way when we don't know where you're going? And you have said that soon the world would not see you anymore, but that we would see you. How can that be? And finally, you said to us that one of us would betray you. One of the 12 followers. I can't believe this. Is it I, Lord, who will betray you? 
He said, I'm I am James, son of Zebedee, brother of beloved John. Our father and his father and his father's father were all great fishermen. They had bountiful catches year after year. They made much money and wealth and had all the things that go with wealth. They had servants, they had a 
finest wine, they had silks, they had everything that money could buy. And then we are out fishing and you come along. And we like your work. We like what you have to say. We, we are very interested. And you challenge us and we decide to go along with you and become fishers of men and spread the word. And we go along with you and, and year after year for a while and we, we decide that, you know, something about our status, we should be allowed to sit on your right and left hand side. But no, that wasn't to be. You said that that wasn't how it works. And then we just, our mother came up. Our mother came up and, and begged you, begged you for us to be able to sit on your right and left hand side. But again, no, no. Is it I, Lord? Is it I? I am Philip. Lord, you said that one of us tonight is going to betray you. I don't understand. How can that be? We've been with you for so long. How can we betray you? We've listened to your words. We've listened to your teaching. I just don't understand. When we first met, I was working, and you said, follow me. And I did. I can't explain why. There was something about your presence, your, your, your words, your, your eyes. It was a good feeling. And I knew that I had to follow you. Uh, I, I saw, had to tell my friend Nathaniel I was so excited. I told him that we had found the Messiah, the Messiah that Moses and the prophets had foretold what was coming. Nathaniel didn't believe me. I don't really blame him. Nathaniel said, what good can come out of Galilee? I said, you have to come and see. You have to experience Jesus. You have to be in his presence to understand. When we crossed the Sea of Galilee, Lord, we went up on the mountain, and the multitudes were there. There, were, there was a sea of people. And you said to me, where, where will we buy the food to feed all these people? And I said, it would take six months' wages to feed all these people. I don't know where we're going to find the food for them. Yet, Lord, you were able to feed them. You fed everybody. It was, a, it was a huge miracle. At the, at the supper, I asked you to show us the Father. And you said to me, Philip, how long have I known you? How long have we been together and you don't know me yet? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. I believe you, Lord. How can I possibly betray you? It cannot be me. Is it I, Lord? My name is Matthew. Also Levi. Means gifts of God. So you can call me Matt, or you can call me Maddie, you can call me Matthew, you can call me Levi, or just call me the gift. <laughs> Lord, I want to thank you for inviting me today. Greatly appreciate it. It's, it's kind of a motley crew, in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> and if you don't mind a little business, Philip, 
25 denarii, you're still behind on those taxes. I'll give you till Sabbath, then you owe me more. <laughs> nice to pull out the real china tonight, the real silver. That's, something special is happening, and I appreciate that you invited me. I'm not always well thought of, it's hard to believe. Tax collectors, you know. I do wonder about the timing, though, of this dinner, two days after taxes are due. I mean, really? You wanted me to RSVP and get here on time? I'm here, all right? I'm in it. But you really wanted me to come. I mean, amongst these others, and amongst all of them, I'm not sure what you saw in me, because when I count my blessings, and believe me, I do know how to <coughs> count every one, sometimes I come up a denarii short. But I'm willing, I'm willing to take a chance on you, because you're willing to take a chance on me. I don't think it could be, but could it be I, my Lord? My name's Thaddeus. Excuse me, Lord, down here at the end of the table. Uh, <laughs> don't forget about me. Um, sitting there next to you, you have your favorite, John the Beloved, teacher's pet, you want to say. And then um, you have your others with uh, cool nicknames and cool names that you gave them. You have uh, James and John, Sons of Thunder. Peter the Rock, <laughs> and uh, Levi, you gave the name Matthew, gift of God. That's a great name, Matthew. I wish I could have gotten that one. <laughs> with you, Lord, for three years. But forget about me, and my name means praise, Thaddeus Praise, and uh, you haven't given me any praise. I don't even think you really know I'm here. Um, I'll probably be one of the forgotten disciples. So, I guess um, you said that one of us is going to betray you tonight. Is it I? Maybe I should. Cycle of Christ. My name is Simon the Zealot. We zealots know that there can be one ruler over all of Israel and Palestine. That's <coughs> Yet the Romans rule over Palestine. We hate the Romans. We hate all the Jews who support the Romans. We hate Jews who even abide with the Romans. Mayhem is the name of our game. We, as zealots, believe in mayhem murder, anything to get rid of the Romans and their supporters. <clears throat> and then, one day I heard you, Lord. I heard you preach love. I heard you preach peace. I heard you preach love, thy neighbor. 
Turn your cheek, and you captured my soul. You spoke the word, and I unconditionally gave myself to you forever. Yet tonight you tell us that one of us will betray you? Is it I? something has changed, and I don't know what it is. Last week, we were at Mary of Bethany's place, and she had 300 denarii of perfume. What did she do? Instead of giving it to me to sell it to give money to the poor, no, she takes it and she pours it over your head, and as it blows down, it goes plop, plop, on the floor. What a waste. Something has changed, and I don't know what it is. We come into Jerusalem thinking, okay, now you're going to come in and you're going to lead us free of the Romans. But what do you do? You don't get a big horse, you get a donkey. How is political leader supposed to come in to Jerusalem with the thousands and thousands of people cheering you on. No, you're coming in a donkey. I don't understand what's going on. And then, and then, when we came in, what we should have been doing is strategizing. How do we make this? How do we get the Romans out of here? Make us free so we can worship without any persecution whatsoever. And no, we don't do that. We sit here with the, the, this meal and we kind of kick back and don't do much. No strategizing whatsoever. And the next thing we know is what you do is what a servant should do. You come down and you wash our feet. Come on, that's a servant's job. That is not the king of the Jews. That is not the Messiah's job. You have done things wrong. You are not supposed to wash our feet. That's a servant's job. 